Good day, good day, and welcome back to the last line some news, man. It's me, Sean, back here with a, another painting video. So the second one in this uh, paint with me journey, as I've uh, kind of given it a placeholder name. Um, but today we're, we're moving on from the uh, Arnold that I was painting, or that that one King Arvidui. Um and we're moving into what is my first favourite faction. There's a little sneak peek here. I've got the the Knights of Dale, or a Knight of Dale. So I've been painting up this uh, new, I call it Dale 2.0 uh, um, army for a little while now, and um, thought I'd show you guys how I've been painting up the uh, the new knights. Um, I've been getting a lot of good feedback about the the paint style of the army in general, so really excited to show you guys how it goes, and uh, hope you enjoy it. So due to being busy recently, I haven't actually painted one of my Dale boys in in about a month. I'd like to say. So it's, it's been a hot minute, so I'm going to need a bit of a refresher. So this is where the uh, the trusty notebook um, of colours comes back into play. Uh, so we'll open it up. Dale Boys are the... It's on the first page, or the first, the first entry, as you would. Straight into just doing all the base coats, and we'll uh, show what it looks like fully base coated before I apply any of the, uh, any of the washes. Alright, so we're back with all the base layers down. It's just a bit of a slop job. Because uh, we'll come back in with washes to uh, to cover up any potential any potential scrubs, which with me there's bound to be a few. So on the cape, if you can see here, this is the main part of the cape, which was our Cantor blue, uh, which you'll also see over on the spear and that little tassel, and then on the inner tunic and another little tassel on the inside. We then move on to Doomble Brown for the uh, the helmet. And the shoulder pads, the tunics, the the arm braces, if uh, if that's what they're called, the greaves, I can't remember. And then Mephiston Red, once again for for those pants, for a couple of tassels on the spear and uh, on the inner tunic, and then for the big part of it over on the back of the uh, of the cape. Rikar flesh is for the trimming at the top of the uh, of the top of the helmet. And for the trimmings of the uh, the shoulder pads, both on the back and on the insides, in there. Uh, Bugman's glow for the uh, for the skin, for the hands and face. Uh, lead belcher for the tip of the spear. Uh, for any any silver, so the chain mail that we've got there. There's a little bit on uh, on his feet at the bottom of the scabbard, and his little chest plate just in there. Just right up in there. Got Belsafar Gold, which I use for the gilding of the shield. Uh, the gilding on top of the helmet. There's a little, a little bit of iconography in there that looks like a few birds, which is the symbol of uh, of Dale. Uh, the back bottom of the spear, just over here. Once again, on the on the greaves, the arm braces. Uh, just and any bits that you want to have that little that little bit of flare you got some buttons up in there as well Then you've got Mournfang Brown which I've used for the uh, For his shoes For the scabbard for the base of the shield both the front and the back uh, For his belt and for his spear and any any ropes connecting to to any form of tassels uh, So this is what he is looking like at the moment with all the base layers now. So once again just a slap job uh, getting it down, and we'll get it all fixed up nicely with some uh, with some washes before moving into highlights. All right, so we're back after the washes have been laid down. Uh, yes, they are not fully dry yet, as you can see. Um, that's because just the bloody weather we've got outside at the moment has been bucketing all day, and shit is just taking forever to dry. So I just wanted to show you quickly uh, before I let it dry and move on to the next stages so you can see the blue of the cape um, it's got a uh, jacket of nightshade over that carob of crimson uh, on any of the blue really you're getting that um, jacket of nightshade carob of crimson goes on any of the red so that's obviously on the pants and the trimming of the cape uh, you go for juicy violet on any of the bronze areas so I've just gone and done that on the front of the shield there uh, you'll see it on the uh, slightly on the helmet, uh, on the gilding there, and anywhere there is bronze. And then Agrax uh, shade goes over all the silver and all the browns. Um, I cheat a little bit, and I've gone and done that on the skin as opposed to using glimmers, which is what I would normally do. 
but hey, I'm experimenting as well as doing this. Uh, the next steps are obviously moving on to the highlights or the uh, the layers and the highlights. So I'll jump onto them. I'll finish off each section. So I'll, I'll do say the blue. I'll come back, show you, explain what I've done, and then move on to the red and the same story with uh, with most. Um, so we'll see you see you soon. So I'm back after completing both the uh, tunic slash leather armor helm, uh, shoulder pads, and the white trimming that you see along the shoulder pads and on his uh, on his crest. Um, you'll notice that his shin guards have been done as well. Uh, so basically, that is just a doombull uh, base, bringing it back, building up that doombull again. Coming in for the 50-50 mix of Doomball and Tuscal Fur as your mid-tone. And then coming to a final highlight with Tuscal Fur. Now with the Tuscal Fur I have attempted, uh, you can kind of see it on the, uh, on the shoulder pads and on the uh, back of the helmet there. I've tried to give it a bit of a textured kind of look by doing these single strokes uh, whilst going across. Uh, just to give it a bit of variation. I've also made sure just to uh, get those highlights done in in, um, in those raised areas, giving a nice bit of a bit bit of contrast um, on those shoulder pads and around that helmet, um, and then especially in the uh, in that tunic area around his waist. And there's a few touches in that in his arm where that shield is connecting there up into his armpit to the right and his armpit to the left as well um, so yeah so that's all done uh, move on to the next step uh, which will be the browns so just <coughs> finish a few more steps uh, so we finished all the browns on the leathers on the uh, on his shoes there his scabbard that you can see down there near his cloak uh, got it all done up on that spear once again just going for that textured look uh, back of the back of the shield in there um, you might be able to see if it decides to focus a uh, little bit of rope there uh, I've gone for really light brown just to differentiate a little bit of everything I've also completed all the the silvers and the bronzes and you can see that really well the bronze anyway on the shield just there and it just has that really nice glint in those, in those high raised areas I will be muting that down at the end of the painting process with a bit of Lamia medium uh, makes it a lot better for uh, a bit of photography for the uh, for the Instagram. We've got the chainmail done. We've got all the silver within the tunic done. That little breastplate uh, chest piece up there that you can see just below his chin. Uh, he's got a little hand guard and a little little bit of gilding on the uh, on the van brace. Uh, so that's that all done. Uh, so the the bronze is you're bringing it back with that Belsavar gold, moving into the. Uh, Cycrax, let me just grab the paint. Uh, moving into the, yeah, Cycrax bronze as the, uh, as the highlight. Uh, the browns is building it straight back up with Mournfang, moving into Skag brown as that mid-tone. But then I use Bane Blade brown just to give it that worn leather look as you can see on the, uh, on the feet of the model. Um, or even on the, the belt within the tunic. Just, just to change it up a little bit, make it look a bit bit spicy a bit more worn uh, now that that's all done um, basically all we have left is the the skin the red and the blues so I've got the face all done and the hands as you can see up in that shield and grasping onto the spear also finally got around to doing that beard uh, so that beard is just Abaddon black with um, a Abaddon back black base with a 50 50 mix of Abaddon and Bane blade brown just to give it a bit of a grey touch. Uh, the skin is as simple as Bugman's, up in Acadian flesh tone, and then finally Kislev, so the basic uh, G dub skin tone. So, we're about to jump onto the really exciting stuff, which is the blues and reds of the, the cape and the pants. I'm going to start off with the red because it's nice and simple, there's not too much of it. So, done with the red on the, uh, on the pants, on the little tassels you can see on the spear, and um, just at his waist area as well as on the trimming of the cape. So I like to go with a really wild um, colour range with this, trying to get that really, you know, fiery feel but to it. Basically this um, this red is to emulate fire 
and that's what I've really gone for. So you've got that really, really dark black recesses, um, and then it comes up to a really bright yellow, um, really bright yellow highlight. And you can see that just, just around that kind of area where my thumb's pointing to. That's what I'm aiming for with all of the red. Um, I'm not going to get it in all spots, but I will get it onto a few. And um, yeah, it's, it's just absolutely sensational. I absolutely love it. I do like going with these really stark, stark contrasts. Um, always been a big fan. Uh, but so the, the red starts off with, uh, once the wash is applied, which is Caribou Crimson, you move into Mephiston Red, just to build up that layer again. Just like everything else, you're building up uh, with that uh, original base layer. Then you move into a layer of Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red, Troll Slayer Orange, and then that final, final highlight, as you can see, uh, pumping out on the knees. Um, you can see it everywhere, but the red is, uh, is Flash Gets Yellow. Just to really, really make it pop. Um, but we're now into the last final step, which is the uh, blue, uh, which is the major part. Um, so we'll get back after that's done, and we'll have a little uh, showcase of uh, the model. Yeah, so here we are with the, uh, not only blues applied, but I've also applied that last layer of Lamia Medium, just to uh, tie everything together, mute down those, uh, those uh, metallics so that they're not as shiny. And I've also painted the base black. Uh, just as that temporary base at the moment, uh, as I said, because I've got uh, some bases coming for them, so that's why they have not been done in this. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the blue, it's all done. Back of the cape, nice, striking, bright colours. So it starts off with Cantor blue, uh, which then moves into a 50 50 mix with uh, Teclas blue, and then from uh, that 50-50 mix of Teclas Blue and Cantor Blue, you jump straight into a flat Teclas Blue. From Teclas Blue, you jump into Lothran Blue. Lothran Blue then turns into uh, a 70-30 mix of uh, Lothran Blue and White Scar, just as that final, final highlight going on to the model. So it's all over the cape there. Um, my hands got a bit unsteady long day at work and, and all that will do that but overall I'm fairly happy with uh, with the highlights how that's turned out uh, you've got the the blues on the inner side of the cape you've got that inner tunic just under the chain mail and then you've got the two tassels so the one up on the spear and the one near the crutch area uh, so there we go that's the uh, that's the night of Dale um, I'll get some some final shots up and...